Let's take a closer look at the Red Bull RB17 project. Again, because Red Bull and Adrian Newey revealed new details which are partly very different from what we heard before in part 1. Adrian Newey, the F1 star designer, always had the wish to design a road legal, no rules sport car. His first taste of such a task was when PlayStation approached him to design such a no rules race car. The result was the X1 in 2010. With the frustrations of the 2014 F1 season, Newey began to lose interest in F1 and through their partnership with Aston Martin, the Valkyrie project started. For this, Red Bull founded a new department, Red Bull Advanced Technologies, where they would use F1 development methods for other areas. Despite everything that happened in the background, the Valkyrie project was finally finished and the car was presented. But working with a partner in such a project can create certain frustrations, especially if this partnership breaks apart during the project. And one small but important side note, the two Swiss Aston Martin dealers who had the exclusive rights to sell Valkyries and were sued by Aston Martin when Stroll took over to remove their exclusive rights are now suing Aston Martin for £150 million. For detailed information on the political, financial and technical background of the Valkyrie project, check out my video series below. So anyway, the result of the Valkyrie project is now that Red Bull wants to build another sports car, but this time they want to do it themselves, without a partner. The internal structure is there and in the meantime, 10 years old already. So people know each other and work together well. Everything happens on Red Bull's technology campus in Milton Keynes, just next to and with the same tools and suppliers as the F1 team. Red Bull announced the project a while ago, but now they revealed new specs that are pretty different from before. So let's take a closer look. The car will be a two-seater and there will be a bit more space for the passengers compared to the Valkyrie. That was one feedback of Valkyrie customers. The biggest surprise is that instead of a V8 biturbo engine, which would also need a lot more cooling, they will now use a high revving, naturally aspirated V10 with 15,000 RPMs. So that is pretty spectacular. Red Bull is building their own engine division in Milton Keynes for F1 engines right now, but they will be pretty busy with the 2026 F1 engine, so the guess is that the V10 will come from Cosworth again. So we can expect a very similar architecture of the engine compared to the Valkyrie V12. This V10 should have 1000 horsepower, just like the Valkyrie V12. But because the RPMs are almost 50% higher, we can expect a smaller capacity, less torque and also because of two cylinders less, a much more compact engine, which will most likely be a fully stressed member again. Instead of a 100 kW electric motor, a 200 kW motor will support the drivetrain, which will smooth in gear shifts and provide first gear and reverse. Also, it will be able to boost and recuperate energy. It could potentially also be used as generator and starter. One of the frustrations of the Valkyrie project was that the car ended up very much above its weight target. In the end, the Valkyrie had a weight of 1270 kg, dry, so without fluids. The RB17 should have a weight of less than 900 kg, and we can be sure that Red Bull won't let this one slip again. If we assume that this will also be without fluids, then the RB17 would be 400 kg lighter than the Valkyrie. And let's come to the other highlight, aerodynamics. Newey claims that the car will produce its own weight, whatever that is, in downforce at 120 miles per hour and 1,700 kg at 150 miles per hour. If we calculate these numbers, we can see that the RB17 must have a CL times frontal area of 6.25 square meter. If we translate that to the 120 miles per hour case, we get the same product for 1,088 kg. And that could be the RB17's dry weight, plus fluids, plus driver. The Valkyrie is 2 meter wide and just over 1 meter high. If we assume a frontal area of 1.7 square meter and assume the same for the RB17, the lift coefficient is over 3.6. New event talks about that they could reach the efficiency level of an aircraft for this four-wheel car. That is amazing because the two front wheels usually destroy efficiency on a normal car, and planes don't have that. 
So if we assume a similar drag coefficient to the Valkyrie of 0.3, because it's likely both cars have the same top speed target, we get an efficiency of 12, which is aircraft territory. To put all this into perspective, the Valkyrie produced 1100 kg of downforce at top speed, so 355 km per hour. The RB17 uses active aero to limit its downforce at 1700 kg, because otherwise you would overload the tires, which by the way are designed by Michelin especially for the RB17. So it does have active aero and also a blown diffuser, which means the engine will become an air pump in the braking zones when you step off the throttle, to not suddenly lose all that downforce. So it will be an interesting sound. So in terms of aerodynamics, we are in a different world compared to the Valkyrie. And they claim that the RB17 will be able to reach F1 lap times. If we think about it, an F1 car with 798 kg plus fuel and driver is not really lighter than the two-seater RB17. It will have more power and active aero. And if one car has more downforce but a smaller frontal area, so the CL times area is also not too far away from the RB17. So in other words, F1 lap times seem to be possible. And because of that, the RB17 needs active suspension, so the car can withstand these downforce numbers, but can also be comfortable at lower speed. Another development target was that the car is easy to drive for a wide range of driver abilities and on a wide range of tracks. With active suspension and active aero and with keeping in mind what kind of customers would use the car in all sorts of situations, the development of such a car is even more complex than to develop an F1 car. And becoming an RB17 customer is not just buying a car. In fact, you will become a member of the Red Bull family. First of all, Adrian Newey's son Harry is in charge of sales, so you need to call him first. Then, during the manufacturing process, you will get closer contact to the brand. Visit them at F1 races, use simulator and driver training sessions to get prepared for your car. And in the end, Red Bull is keen to get your feedback about the car. There will only be 50 of them and if we assume a price of 5 million pounds, it's a 250 million pound project for Red Bull, which doesn't seem too much. And that is around half of the Valkyrie project. But they didn't start from scratch and they could use a lot of the Valkyrie knowledge. In terms of timeline, they are currently manufacturing and testing parts. There should be a presentation in summer 2024 to show the first full-size model of the car. In 2025, they want to test drive the prototypes, so we can look forward to that. And in 26, for the new F1 regulations, they will start delivering the car. And they confirmed the car won't be street legal from the factory. But that can change later, if you can legalize a 15,000 RPM V10. So that's the plan so far. So how do you like the new Red Bull RB17 project, or what we know about it so far? Will it finish what they couldn't finish with the Valkyrie? And do you think they can keep the high development targets? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.